sweats wins. He who plans wins. And he who tries also wins. Even if you tried sometimes, several times, don't stop before you reach your destiny. Where there are qualms, there are hopes as well. Welcome to another new episode of Dr. Thamni Rao's Masterclass. I have a very special guest on board with us today, who is known for his never say die spirit. He's a retired army officer turned businessman and a pioneer of low cost aviation in India. He went on to take a series of entrepreneurial roles such as dairy farmer, sericulture consultant, poultry farmer, hotel owner, and field bike dealer, stockbroker, and finally, aviation entrepreneur. Well, my friends, not keeping you in suspense anymore, here presenting to you Captain G.R. Gopinath. Yes, it is Mr. Gopinath. And it's so good to have you with us today, Captain. And I'm sure my viewers are going to love it. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Your, your father, Mr. Ramaswamy Iyengar, was a school teacher and a Kannada novelist. He had an immense impact on your ideologies and thoughts. Although your father himself was a teacher, he did not believe in the system of traditional schooling and was resolved to teach you at home. Nonetheless, you made it to school, albeit directly to the fifth standard. What are your thoughts about schooling at home and its management? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, my father was a, a, a teacher, and as I say, a poor teacher in, in terms of, uh, they call it in Canada, butter maestro, because the salaries are always less. Uh, but uh, uh, poor in uh, maybe uh, wealth, but uh, rich in uh, aristocratic in his values. Uh, there is a small correction. My father was not the novelist. Uh, he is my grandmother's brother, Guru Ram Swami Anga, the famous Kannada mm -hmm. story writer. My father is also the same name. And uh, yeah, my father, you know, was very uh, greatly influenced himself by Rabindranath Tagore uh, on his Shanti Niketan. Uh, he was influenced by even Shivaram Karan's, uh, you know, where he said the school, in a sense, be can become a prison. And since my father was a teacher, he said, uh, I can teach you at home and uh, you play uh, as long as you can, you know, as, as old as you possibly can. Of course, not everyone can do that. So, and my father had the dedication and uh, He'd walk to his uh, school uh, every day uh, in the neighboring village. Uh, initially, he taught in Guru, then he was teaching in a neighboring village. He would walk those uh, five kilometers many days because the buses were uh, rare. And, uh, but I never saw him, uh, you know, uh, depressed at home. He would come back and uh, he would, um, um, you know, teach me for one hour every day in the morning and one hour in the evening. And rest of the day I was uh, free to play and uh, that I think stood me in good stead not only in studies uh, but also uh, you know he would take me uh, uh, to the garden with him he would take me to the paddy fields and as we went and walked along the rice fields he would show me the Dalits uh, you know singing a song and um, you know um, uh, harvesting the uh, rice fields they had a different song for the harvesting or uh, they would have a different song for threshing they would have another song, folk song for uh, well, planting. And he would say, like, look, you know, uh, you always complain at home when things are not okay. And look at these people, you know, uh, they, they never complain. They, they, they've, got, they've got so much just, uh, joy and song in their heart. So uh, what, what he did was that uh, he would always show me people uh, who were marginalized rather than the rich sahukar of the village. Uh, he would never point to the Saukar and say, look, you know, you should become rich like him. But he would say, you must count your blessings. You're lucky. You're fortunate. You have, you know, you know food at home. But you complain it's either too hot or too cold or you complain about its uh, taste. And uh, and he would show me uh, those Dalits 
when they were eating they would put some they would also collect some greens and they would put the greens for their meals uh, along with the ragi bude on one side they would put crabs on the other on the pouch and they would put mushrooms and they would say that look um, god compensates in a in a different manner that uh, he gives him free food which is more nutritious than the food that we eat uh, so he, he had all the time uh, giving me these kind of lessons so there was uh, uh, it, it was not poverty poverty i said poverty uh, we were much, much more fortunate because he was a t- school teacher and in a small holding of land but uh, he was always a stretch for resources uh, because he had eight children and uh, he was always you know uh, that was what I was i was looking at that he was never comfortable with money uh, enough money to uh, you know take care of his children and uh, but there was no gloom uh, there was no uh, there was a little bit of poverty in the sense that sense not the poverty of the dalits uh, but uh, it, it was full of sunshine it was full, full of sunshine because there was no envy uh, envy for the rich envy for someone who is more, more fortunate than us there was always um, the joy because you had more than the uh, others who were less fortunate than you so these things uh, inspired me so he took me to the river taught me swimming so i, I, I grew up swimming in the local river uh, so i grew up with nature and looking at people around me and when i joined my fifth standard um, directly um, uh, i was uh, never found wanting um, i was always doing well in school and uh, and even in those days uh, there was only one school the government middle school in guru uh and about 20 uh, villages surrounding it used to uh, the children would come from there and uh, many of them would cross the river and in, in the monsoons they'd be drenched uh there were no raincoats they would wear these uh, reed made of reed uh, what they called goraga a uh, kind of a shelter, uh, shelter from the rains and uh, so i would always watch them uh, and they used to touch me that you know these students would walk 5 km 6 km from across the river Uh, and my house was just about half a kilometer away so in that sense you know uh, i it, it was uh, the life was uh, you know uh, uh, full of sunshine well i i think you know with your father being a teacher and going to school he didn't feel that you should go to school as well if he felt that you can be you know sort of taught at home i mean did you not miss the kind of uh, born homey with all the students around because school is not only for studies it's also for overall yeah. development you didn't feel that in that case uh, you know the, uh, there was no uh, lkg and ukg and the, there was only a one primary school and it was one room with where all the first to fourth standard kids were there you know it, it didn't have four separate rooms from the prim- the primary school there was only one one hall big hall where all, all the first to fourth ch- standard children were there is only the middle school uh, fifth sixth and seventh you know we had different classrooms so my father said it is anyway all crowded and um, and those schools were only till about say 11 o'clock they were not there all day the primary school said there was no lkg so uh, but i used to meet all these kids you know when they came back probably they envied me not coming to school because and those days the teachers also would, would beat you you know quite a quite a lot so probably they envied me rather than me envying them and then eight children of the family i mean how different were all of you did they have the same enthusiasm that you had or were they all different yeah i mean uh, i think uh, my father taught uh, just uh, the three of us uh, the first three and afterwards i think uh, it was too much for him but what he did was for the rest of the children uh he would send them for tuition after the school uh to the because uh, the this, the teachers of the government school uh, uh were very good you know their their standard of uh, uh, uh the, their own standard of education was very high if you know in those days you had these government uh, municipal schools uh talak board schools um, and then you had the regular government school uh, there was only one high school in hasan uh, then much later high school came for guru then there was a government middle school and these uh, 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 these uh, schools um uh, had large playgrounds the teachers uh, uh, all those teachers uh, of those days were uh, you know 
extraordinarily dedicated and they were good teachers you know their the standard of their either mathematics or english or everything was really good i think anybody who studied in those days in government schools uh will will tell you uh, that uh, in fact ck prahla the famous management guru he studied in a municipal school i'm sure many uh, people who are in their 70s and um, 75 today uh, studied in government schools uh, yeah yes so then you know from there i think you know coming yeah. from a background of uh, yeah. you know being with nature having seen poverty but then you've also realized the value of money and the value of family and also the value of people around you you were able to understand that what will be the aspirations of people you know people in your kind of status at that point of time and then going in through your journey of being the captain in the indian army i know way back in 1962 you also have been part of the 1971 bangladesh liberation war did your military experience influence your thinking about the war in the military in general you know as you know the, all of us uh, the, what, there's a constant debate between nature and nurture uh, nurture mm-hmm. nature is uh, you know is your genetic uh, that inheritance uh, genetically what you are uh, you are shaped by that and you are also shaped by nurture which is uh, people who nurture you your family your teachers um, um, your, your your society uh that ha- that nurtures you so this 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 is always this uh uh, uh tension or, or uh, between these two uh, which shape an individual and uh, so is the same in my case and uh, i was studying in a local uh, kannada medium government school and the headmaster uh, one i still remember his name um mr nanjundaya uh, he came uh, uh, he came to the school and one day i said there's a military school examination uh is anybody keen here to apply for it and we did not know what uh, military school was except my father even today if you go to rural karnataka you will find uh, a board there saying military hotel and uh, yes. even today you find it deep yes. in the village yes. and i asked my father what is that military hotel he said you know in the in the in the military people eat uh, non vegetarian it makes them yes. strong and uh, that's the reason the word military is given for the hotel because they serve non vegetarian and that's all i had and i was a little i think puny boy and uh, a little conscious of my not being very strong and getting bullied so i had this dream that uh, i must uh, i must leave the village and become strong so when he said that uh, anybody wants to apply for this exam it is a preparatory exam for the sainik school and i i i without thinking you know i just lifted my hand uh, and uh, uh, and and uh, the the teacher said fine and, and uh, again he asked nobody else is the man i do not know why you know there is a very famous uh, poem of uh, uh, putin asmacha the great poet uh, he says uh, you know gudiya che gidada che gadiya che hogona bandiro hosanadige uh, i'll just translate you know, beyond the temple beyond the woods beyond the borders let us uh, seek new horizons and new lands so i in just that dream of getting out of the village i lifted my hand and i went to hassan and um, by bus and I stayed in my uncle's house uh, who was the, uh, my other uncle uh, guru ram swami's younger brother was a kannada pandit there and uh, morning i went for the school exam in the government school which was given uh, it was conducted by ministry of defense i failed the exam because it was in english so i came back and told the uh, headmaster that uh, you know i was crying he said what happened he said i couldn't understand anything it was in, i was studying in a kannada medium school and the, uh, it was in a english uh, uh, paper so uh, he sitting in that village um, he sent a postcard to the ministry of defense and said that uh, you know if you are eager to recruit people from rural areas rural areas for the military school then he must give an exam in the language they understand english is not intelligence and uh, he wrote this letter was very upset and just posted it from that sitting that we remote village and somebody in the in the village uh, saw that somebody in the ministry of headquarters uh, defense headquarters saw that postcard <laughs> and uh, after uh, three months you know they 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 
changed their mind and uh, the headmaster came again and said look this time it, the exam is in kannada so who would like to go so uh, again i was the only one who raised my hand so i went and i passed the exam this time wow. and i joined the military school so that was my first uh, i think uh, inkling that uh, you know never never take no for an answer question it you know don't uh, don't uh, blindly accept if someone says something you know you don't lose anything you know at least you question it and somebody will open the door uh, if you keep trying keep knocking somebody will open the door and then i passed the exam and uh, joined the uh, sanic school then from there i took the exam for the uh, sanic school there are for 20 uh, 20 25 uh, sanic schools in each state they prepare you for taking the upsc examination which is conducted for ias and uh, uh, you know ips and uh, army officers so i took that exam to go to the national defense academy in khadakwasta so out of uh, uh, in my first class because there were hardly any students who had applied to the sanic school we were only eight, eight students eight three of us uh, got qualified and i was the first uh, in my batch to to then uh, become an officer in the army the other two joined the air force and uh, even as our training the course was cut short and uh, that's the reason my course is uh, nicknamed as born to battle and i was posted uh, uh, straight to uh, sikkim where my unit was at 15000 feet and i moved with the unit uh, on the day i reached the unit my unit was moving down packing mobilizing with the guns and um, the trucks and so it reached at about 10 o'clock at night and morning 4 o'clock we started down to the plains uh, to the bangladesh border and that we has, plunged straight into the war yeah that has must have been very exciting though yeah it was exciting uh, because you know um, uh, uh, as you know whatever you may have learned uh, as a doctor yourself uh, which yes. is very important but ultimately most of it you learn uh, first hand uh, as an experience you know you learn more through experience yes. but the training as a doctor is very important so we had trained for 3 uh, years in sanic school 3 uh, years in nda and 1 year in uh, ima indian military academy dehradun so about 7 years of training and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, we plunged straight into the war and uh, a lot of it was uh, learned on the job uh, you know uh, of course war is not a you know place to learn uh, but uh, we were trained well enough and uh, it is exciting in the sense that uh, you know there's a tension in the air uh, there is an excitement uh, of a different kind and uh, and war is not a good school for generosity uh, uh, you know it is a yeah it is a words, very cruel thing there were a lot of dead bodies there were a lot of, i lost lost a few yeah. friends lost a few of my classmates so mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, nobody wins in a war it is very 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 Uh, difficult uh, you know devastating for the families uh, for the people Similar. who lose their legs or eyes or yeah. hands uh, or uh, become crippled and also when they die the families you know, we, uh, you know the, many of them die when leaving the young widows so yeah. um, it, it is a shattering experience yeah. in the words of steve jobs the only way to do great work is to love what you do and if you haven't found it yet keep on looking and don't settle you've been in the indian army a dairy farmer a bike dealer and then an aviation entrepreneur what have been your defining moments i think uh, each of them were uh, glorious experiences because whatever i did i was immersed in it um it, i was totally uh, passionate about it i was committed to it and uh, after 8 years in the army uh, i served in uh, sikkim i served in uh, after the war i was in sikkim i was in bhutan i was in uh, assam border then i was in kashmir i was in rajasthan and one day i felt you know uh, i must do something on my own uh, and uh, uh, i felt that uh, i should pursue new new opportunities in life and uh, done and seen enough i had motorcycle and trekked a lot in the himalayas i had gone on the entire uh, north india and motorcycles i trekked the whole of usa uh, hitchhiking and uh, so i came back and i said let me do something and I, i did not know at that time what i wanted to do but i was very sure that i did not want to be in a garment job anymore and uh, so i felt the only way to discover that is to you know venture out 
Uh, and I say I was young. Uh, I was about uh, 27, 28, and uh, 27, I think. I got commission very early. Like most of us, we got commission as an officer as, at 20. And uh, so I was, uh, I was uh, young and I had been trained well. I said, I said I have uh, with all this background. I'm sure I, I should be able to uh, find a, a vocation for myself. And the only best way of what. You know, they say sometimes security is a mortal's chief enemy. If you're too secure, um, it, is not a, it is not a good thing. The army is very, very secure in the sense, you know, you know everything is taken care of for you. you know, there are army campers, there's an officer's mess there. You've got a lot of people under your command. You have a lot of resources, uh, uh, which, is a, which is a great life. But after some time, you know, I felt, you know, I'm going to do something like that. So I came back to my village uh, uh, thinking that I'll do farming. My father, was, of course, was devastated. He said, you know, we, 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 I, I put a little meager savings for there. Um, I put that to send you to the uh, National Defense Academy and Sainik School. And uh, I was the first officer from the entire area in my village and district. And he said, you come back. And I said, look, I want to uh, do some farming. And he was disappointed in a sense because he knew that farming is not easy. Uh, but anyway, my heart was set, and I said, uh, "Let me, let me get into that," because uh, it was quite romantic for me that uh, the lands in Gorur, where they had built a dam, that they were submerged, my family lands, and the government had given new lands, about 100 kilometers away, barren lands. Uh, so that uh, sort of uh, was very uh, um, thrilling that I could go there. So I bought an army tent, I had a Doberman dog, I had a Harijan Dalit boy in my house uh, who used to be herding cattle in those days. I took all of that and went and pitched a tent. And my idea was that I must convert that barren land into a farm. So, and farming gives you a lot of uh, uh, opportunities to do different things. So I had a silkworm rearing, I had a dairy farm, I had poultry, I planted bananas and coconuts and all the crops. And that's how I got started. And uh, I said, uh, you know, I must make a coconut plantation. And in the meantime, you know, I'll have all these things. You know, milk will give me money on a daily basis. Poultry will give it on a monthly basis. Silkworm rearing will give you once in 45 days because... And uh, so I had a lot of things which were, you know, integrated one to the other. And that's how I embarked on uh, uh, farming. And they were, uh, you know, it was, like all farmers, I got into debt. And like all farmers, uh, I don't, uh, found it is not easy because the, you are dependent on the climate, dependent on the rains, uh, whether too much of rains or lack of rains, and uh, faulty seeds. You yeah, get, uh, don't get prices. It's a constant struggle for the farmers. Uh, and uh, and I and I, but that led me constantly to think as to what, how how can I do it differently? How can I make it profitable? And I realized that uh, whatever was uh, uh, ecologically friendly uh, was also economically more uh, 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 sustainable. Uh, you know, like for example, for uh, silkworm rearing, if you have an RCC building, uh, mm -hmm. then the cost is very high to build it. But the temperature inside the building goes up. But if you have a thatch building with a lot of uh, large windows, the cost comes down. You can, uh, but the temperature is, is cool in summer and warm in winter. Uh, so I did a lot of innovations uh, into farming and I completely switched from uh, uh, chemical manure pesticides to organic farming. And uh, eventually I came out of uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, problems I was in. And I, well, not many people know that, I got uh, one of the most recognized uh, global awards uh, called the Rolex Award for uh, um, uh, path-breaking work in um, uh, natural farming with sericulture, sil silicon rearing. So that gave me, I was in the newspapers every day, that gave me some fame as an organic farmer. And I set up uh, a organic uh, uh, irrigation uh, uh, and uh, farming consultancy. And since farm income was not sufficient, I had a motorcycle uh, and uh, and they, one day I went at seven o'clock in the evening to Hassan and my motorcycle was giving trouble and I went to the dealer, the dealer was closed. 
and they told me the dealer had uh, uh, left the, left the town so i suddenly a thought came to me i said look you know between hasan markera and uh, uh, chikmagalore there was no uh, bullet and field motorcycle dealerships bullet dealerships so that's how i got this idea and along with another friend who was also a farmer i set up a enfield dealership in hasan because i felt uh, you know that will supplement my uh, farm income and uh, it was also a great idea because uh, you know for the for, uh, i realized that uh, uh, i was uh, uh, you know able to do things uh, and i had about eight branches so i had about uh, 40 people working so I had, uh, so the, the thing is that creating jobs is the biggest charity today